These eyes, do 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 do, are crying. These eyes have seen a lot of loves, but they're never gonna see another love like you. These eyes, do 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 do, are crying. Cause everybody on social media posts a lot of posts, but they got no proof. Do 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 do, these eyes, do 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 do, are trying. Do do do. To not go crazy on everybody who posts stuff with no proof. Do 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 do. No facts. Do 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 do. In fact, do 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 do. Y'all lack the ability to be on the Snapple cap because you have no facts. Do 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 do. It's a freestyle. Do 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 do. I got bars. Do 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 do. I got bars like prison where I want to send you all because you should be in jail because you're hurting society. Do 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 do, these eyes do 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 do. Y'all liking? All right, that went way too long. Hey, longest song I ever did on the podcast. I would say uh, I don't even know who the original singer is, but I mean that was my own version. So basically, I'm the new uh, what do you call it? Uh, Stairway to Heaven, Led Zeppelin. Have you guys ever seen that rabbit hole? We're off to an early rabbit hole, Peter Rabbit. Um, seen that Led Zeppelin video where they show how crazily, crazily, uh, Led Zeppelin stole Stairway to Heaven, the exact chord progression. If you've never done that and you want to have your mind blown, go watch the YouTube video comparing Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven to another artist. There's so many cases of that. The other big famous one that still I'm just like, how the fuck did that pass? Is that, uh, I don't know if it was under pressure. Was it? And then Ice Ice Baby. He was like, nah, man. I went. He's like, they went. Totally different things, you know? Yeah, that's how I'm feeling. Uh, ice, ice, baby, baby. I was about to say vanilla ice and ice, ice, baby at the same time. I think that's what happens. I think that's where my stroke first happened. Is that sometimes the way my brain works, like a goddamn goldfish, is I start thinking of too much at the same time, and I can't just tell you it all. Like I can't just be like bleh, and then say the whole statement in one sound. So that's where I run into issues because I want to express so much without losing my thoughts. That's it. That's that's where the rabbit holes come from is the fact that I have to acknowledge them that I'm getting off topic because if not, I'll just stay off topic. I'll just go down rabbit holes till we hit the center of the universe and come out in China. And then I wake up in the morning and I'm making Apple iPhones, you know, shit's wild with these iPhones, huh? Um, I was seeing something before this podcast this morning uh, about how in uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, I believe, they are, there's basically Tinder, but for slave workers, and it's for people to do labor, and uh, they take a bunch of, it's basically slavery that's going on in the Middle East, but they're shipping in uh, Africans from all over Africa that need some kind of job and they're willing to work. So what they're doing is they're created an app, which apparently is on the Google store and uh, the Apple store where you can uh, see the worker, what they'll work for and what their qualities are. And it's just super dirty the way that they're doing it. Uh, just not a good look. Um, but those are the people making your iPhones. I think we need to bring those jobs back to America. I think that's I think that's the whole big thing is people want to cut costs. God damn it, why am I turning into this kind of podcast? But I'll finish this last thought before we get off of this. We'll, we'll hop out into a lighter uh, rabbit hole. But people want to cut costs and like that's why things at the farmers market are more expensive because you're supporting small business and uh you're getting higher quality food. There's a great podcast, uh, and he has a book about farming and the importance of farming and how when you're going to the store and you're buying vegetables and you're buying meat at such a, a fraction of the cost, I wouldn't say a fraction of the cost, but maybe double of what you would pay for grass fed or what you would pay for uh, buying straight from a farmer uh, in small amounts, it actually gets cheaper 
uh, if you buy in bulk from a farmer and you and like four other people go in on a cow, moo, uh, you're paying, you're only paying the upfront cost of, uh, what that cow costs, the meat production. So if you buy a steak for, you know, crazy sell for $10 at Vons, if you would have bought it from a farmer, it would have been like 20 pounds or $20 a pound. Uh, you're only paying the upfront cost. What you don't see is the cost uh, in health and nutrition and later on hospital bills and everything that's going to go wrong from eating that kind of uh, factory food. And that's something that I've been getting on board with is the whole trying to live off the land. And a lot of people don't know. It's something that I wasn't really aware of till recently was the fact that when you get these vegetables from like the store, even organic, there's, that's the thing is like people get duped by thinking they're getting organic. All that means is they've created a fancy uh, loophole to be able to put organic on the, uh, on the packaging. Like when they say chicken is free range, what that really means is that chicken had at any given time the ability to walk like one to six feet in front of it and then be able to go in two other directions. And that was considered free range. When you see that free range package, you're just like, oh shit, that means that shit. It just, you picture a chicken out in the forest or the woods, or you pi picture a chicken just waking up in a barn, a big red barn, and you have farmer, old McDonald, and that chicken just gets up and goes, ah, oh, where do I want? And it's just whistling while it's working. And it's just out there picking up bugs and everything and waving at the neighbors and the kids and ah, and uh, seeing the coyote on the hill and be like, ah, maybe it'll get me later, you know? But no, they're, they're still in prison, chicken prison. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting so many notifications on my computer right now. This is so unprofessional. I tried to ignore it for the first few sounds, but you know what? That's something I'm going to take up with management and I'm going to talk to HR and we're not going to have those issues anymore. It's all about progress, baby. Progress is such a hot word right now. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 51st episode, okay? Uh, go ahead and stick the intro song now. Nah, I didn't want to. We thought we were going to do that again. Uh, 51st, welcome to Area 51. Um, <clears throat> you guys remember how good life was when we were just talking about aliens and shit in area 51. That's how soft life got for us for a little while is the fact that we were just like, we're going to raid area 51 by golly. And then like everybody met up and, uh, they had concerts and shit out there near area 51. That was like a huge thing for that community. I don't know if you guys saw that, but like, so many people went out there and they threw parties like they turned it into a party and it was just like yeah the love of aliens and this is cool i was all for it the alien 51 raid um it's crazy how much the landscape has changed <clears throat> and it's crazy that i was looking at stuff online today um the landscape has changed so much and it's not even really with the people but things are becoming divided. Um, and I think that's something that if you're posting stuff saying, if you vote for this person, then you support this. It's like the hypocrisy of it all. You can't tell someone this is what they're supporting. A lot of people don't know. Okay. And you're not doing a very good, like you're part of the problem. If you're not taking the moment to try to educate people and realize that it's okay if there's people with other views than your own. Because maybe they just have a misunderstanding and you're generalizing them and being like, if you do this, then you're a racist. Why don't you, like, I, I guarantee you that doesn't apply to everyone. So if you generalize everybody, people are going to generalize you. Like, that's the craziest thing is that a lot of people, and, and I'm talking about political, uh, racial, uh, cultural, um, financially, when you generalize any group when you're fighting for equality, you're basically doing segregation. Like that's the whole idea of equality is not to generalize and group people. But the hypocrisy is a lot of people who are fighting or think they're fighting for equality. They're segregating. It, like it's, it's literally the opposite of what we all want. Um, 
which is why I don't get too crazy about everything because I'm just like, hey, the idea of equality is to treat everybody with the same respect and everybody with the same opportunities. I don't, I don't, I don't like to, uh, I don't like to treat someone any different. Like that's the biggest thing for me is I've always tried to treat people the same and make them feel as normal as possible. Not feel like they feel like I have to be on eggshells around them or something's different or we're not the same people. Cause that's all what we really want, right? Is for everybody to feel the same. That's equality. Anyway, I'm just speaking to dead air because yeah. Um, something I saw also that was kind of crazy to me. <clears throat> have you guys seen Looney Tunes? Of course you have, you know, Elmer Fudd. Uh, where he's like, shh, I'm hunting wabbits. They took his gun away, okay? This is how ridiculous shit has gotten, is that they took away Elmer Fudd's gun. They were like, no more. We're not going to have a gun anymore. It's too violent. I get, like, why are we still making this cartoon, is what I'm about, is I'm like, okay, that was in the past. Okay. Um, they took away his gun, and... Instead of replacing it with, I don't know, I don't even know what you could replace it with. Maybe a bat, you know, because, you know, people club seals and shit. So I'm like, okay, that's logical. They gave this motherfucker Elmer Fudd a scythe. A scythe. If you don't know what that is, it's what the Grim Reaper carries. What the fuck? That seemed like the best replacement for Elmer Fudd's gun. A, because you were worried about kids seeing violence and gun violence that it would incite them? That is ridiculous. That same dumb logic is the same dumb logic of being like, hey, she was asking for it. Like, girls shouldn't show their boobs or anything like that because it's going to incite uh, violence in men. No. A kid seeing something, a, a, a hunter with a gun, if anything, shows the reality of hunting and the importance of conservation. A kid sees Elmer Fudd with a scythe. He goes, hey, I want to play that game. We have tons of knives in the, in the kitchen. Let me chase my brother around like he's a little silly wabbit. You know? That's what's going to happen. I feel like that was just such a dumb move. This is why some people shouldn't be in charge of making decisions. Because uh, kids are going to cut other kids. Um, and they're just going to be playing because... They're going to see, oh yeah, if you kill the rabbit, it just comes back in the next episode. Bugs Bunny will be back. The little kid's going to be at his brother's funeral, not crying, and just have a little smile. And be like, wow, I got everybody to come together. <laughs> little Timmy's going to be so excited about this when he shows up in next week's episode. I'm going to tell him all about it. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um... It is crazy to think like that's the thing is why I think this is so silly is because we're acting like guns don't exist and we're acting like guns are a vital part of our society and an important part. Uh, a lot of times people only want to look at the bad side of guns. Um, this is me getting back to my whole idea of why martial arts is so important and, uh, training in boxing, jujitsu, wrestling, all these different disciplines because it builds confidence in kids. And it also makes you not a victim. Um, because a lot of times, even when you just, people know that it's not going to be a pushover. Like that's the thing with bullies and everything. They don't want to fight. They don't want to be challenged. When they see, they want to see a victim. They want to see someone who doesn't know how to defend themselves. They don't want to see, even if they're bigger and stronger and they'll win, they don't want that any of that chance happening. So what do they do? They go for the kid that seems helpless. You teach your kid how to fight and defend himself, he's not going to be helpless. Listen, you know what state has some of the least uh, home invasions? Texas. You want to know why? Texas likes their guns. Okay? Got a lot of different gun laws in Texas. And when you have states like that, you can look at the statistics. There is much less gun violence in the sense of uh, illegal guns and guns getting in the wrong hands compared to states that have such high uh, gun restrictions. You know what are two of the biggest states that have gun restrictions? 
Chicago, and New York, where some of the most uh, gun violence happens. How crazy is that? You would think it was the other way around, that the looser gun vi- or gun regulations and laws, uh, that you would have more violence. I didn't plan on talking about gun laws in here today. Um, but it's like, it, it's what goes back to the whole, my idea with guns. I am a, uh, a gun owning American. I got a few, I keep them things on deck, uh, for hunting and for home protection. Um, and I think it's important because <clears throat> it, it makes more sense than ever. The second amendment, if we're really, and I think this is what a hundred percent of people on, uh, in America can agree upon is the fact that the police needs reform, right? The police aren't as effective at doing their job, right? We do see that, that we've, we see how untrained they are in a lot of situations. How is it not so important for every home to be ready to defend themselves of a home invasion? That responsibility doesn't fall on the cops. People think that the cops are genies, that if someone breaks into your house or you know shows up to do violence, they think that they're going to rub the magic lamp, their phone, dial 911, and phew, the cops are going to show up. Fucking Dwayne The Rock Johnson's just going to fall from a helicopter. <laughs> All right, guys. I've never done a rock impression, but that was it. It doesn't work like that. What is it on a good on a good call? There's like a five, six minute call time. Cool. Your family will be uh, soup by then. I think even in the idea of you just getting a gun for home protection, you don't have to be one of these people that just go shoot out in the forest and drink Budweiser and shit. No, you can just be someone who goes to the range once a month, makes sure you're proficient with it, and uh, keep a Glock locked up, you know? That's what I recommend for home invasion, a Glock um, or shotgun, something that spreads. But I really feel that you could be that, and that's what every home should be. I think every home should have a gun. Uh, Let me caveat that. Every home who is responsible and uh, does the right training and follows the precautions needs to be responsible. And I think if you want to get in that debate, there's a lot of people who aren't responsible with the things that they have now. There's people who aren't fucking responsible with Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, sugar, uh, Cabbage Patch Kids. No, those are dolls. Sour Patch Kids. That's what I meant. Skittles, M&M's. Too many of y'all motherfuckers are tasting the rainbow. And that's the thing is I think, uh, I was watching a podcast with, uh, I forgot his name, but he was talking about the importance of all citizens should know about guns. We should all be trained with weapons. I do really think that because it makes an informed society and it makes an educated society. And imagine if guns weren't so taboo. How many kids do you think were 16 and pregnant because they didn't have the proper sex education that they didn't even want to acknowledge it with their kids or they tried to restrict their kids so much, dude, that's the way that you get uh, a kid to be highly sexual (laughs) is you tell them not to do it. But if you treat them as responsible people and you actually educate them on, uh, STDs and I don't know why I'm grouping these and guns together, but I feel like that's how you avoid it is you don't try to demonize it and make it the forbidden fruit. Cause I know me as a kid, you told me, Evan, don't touch that hot pan. Oh, why shouldn't I touch it? Cause it's hot. Okay. And I said, so it was mainly always because I said, so you got to give me some facts. You go, Evan, don't touch, don't touch that hot pan. Why? Because it's going to burn you. Your hands are going to blister. You're not going to be able to play anymore. Bars. I got it, mom. But you hit me with that because I said so and it's a sin. I'm going to go. I'm going to touch that hot pan as soon as you turn away. And I suffer the consequences. But one thing that my dad always did is he would go, Mijo, you can learn the easy way and you can learn the hard way. And he would do this. He loved dropping this gem when he was in the middle of giving me the belt. Hashtag beat. Um, 
he would he would be like i would do something he would tell me no or he would tell me you know it was something i knew i wasn't supposed to do and he already gave me the chance not to do it <clears throat> and be like okay now you got to get the belt and then he would love saying this like he was fucking uh tom cruise in some action movie or arnold schwarzenegger he'd be like me some people learn the easy way and some people learn the hard way and you have chose the hard way bars spank bars but anyway that's my whole idea we need to educate people that's what everything gets back to is we need to educate people on sugar on guns and uh why we shouldn't have scythes in uh cartoons that shit is wild um what else did i want to talk about oh um cancel culture it's crazy that we need to cancel, cancel culture. We need uh, real shit. It's it's crazy uh, that people can get canceled. Like I just saw Jimmy Kimmel got canceled for saying the N word while he was playing Snoop Dogg in a parody music song or whatever, a music song. I sound like someone who's never done music in my life. I'm embarrassed of who I am. In a song. They did like a parody song. He dressed up as Snoop Dogg. I don't know if he did blackface. But it was like 10, 15 years ago. And apparently he said the N-word. In it. Not a good mood move. Even if you're. Uh, even if you're doing a parody song. And everybody knows it's a joke. It just doesn't look good. Because then he's getting cancelled now. Uh, for something that happened 10 or 15 years ago. And it's like. This is what I was talking about in the last episode of understanding the progress that people are making. Would Jimmy Kimmel do that now as uh, he's gotten older and he's gotten smarter? No, I don't think he would. But also, fuck him. You want to know why? Because Jimmy Kimmel's one of those people who have been this caped crusader for social justice and people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. If you know you're not perfect, don't tell other people to be perfect. And I think that's the whole thing that bothers me the most about cancel culture is we act like people can't make mistakes. But the thing is, is people don't want you to make mistakes that they think are mistakes and they don't even want to acknowledge their own. Like that's the thing is you got to be pretty perfect. Like I said, you got to be the Amish if you want to uh, be trying to cancel motherfuckers. But even the Amish do some weird shit. I've heard some stories. What is that whole thing that go off for, for like a month? They give you your crazy month where you're allowed to just do whatever and they go into the towns and just wreak havoc sexually. Drink all the alcohol, take all the drugs, and then they just return and act like it didn't happen. They're like, got it out of my system. It's like a werewolf that just sneaks out at night. Arroo! But I just think the whole idea of cancel culture is ridiculous. Um, We're going to lose self-expression. Anybody who supports this, and obviously there's cases where it's like, oh, we found out you're a huge piece of shit and you actually deserve to be canceled. Cool. But if it's just stuff that doesn't matter and and it's just like, there's some stuff we have to look at and go, okay, the culture was at a different place than where it is now. And we have to understand that. And that person... I assume if given the right to uh, speak freely would admit that they did something wrong and then we move on. Okay. This whole idea of just canceling people and trying to find people. That's the thing is people go through things with a fine tooth comb just to get something on them because their life ain't shit. If you're trying to cancel other people for no, re- like you just, you you have nothing going on in your life. Right. Um, it's crazy that there's just, I feel like I go on rants on this podcast and I think it's just because climate is so weird right now. Every day I I go less and less on social media because I see so much shit that makes me fucking send my eyeballs into the back of my head with a violent exorcism, like eye rolling, just, you know, and it's because people are just going so far. So far, so far. Um, I also think it's it's crazy that we're at a place. This is the only thing that I think would be good coming out of all the protests 
Uh, obviously, there's other things, but this is a thing that I think would be good. Um, we get rid of uh, just having two political parties. Like, it's nuts to me that these really are, out of a country that has so many great minds, real geniuses, people that started from the bottom and have the overall well-being of our country in mind, Joe Biden and Donald Trump are our only two choices. How insane is that? Out of how many people we have on this goddamn planet, these are our choices. Does that not seem crazy to anybody else? And then you hear the argument of the lesser of two evils. I think it's the lesser of two evils when you actually break down objectively what those evils are. Because a lot of times when people people apply that thinking to a situation, I always say this shit, and I know it's annoying to some people. They leave out variables. They leave out the fact that what you consider a lesser evil doesn't mean that on this, they have the same output of things and it's just going to be less of that. They're going to come with their own whole different can of worms of evil. It's going to have problems that we're not even aware of. And it's like, we've created such an intricate, confusing system of politics where no one even really knows what's happening, what's really going to make a difference. And again, I go back to like, I think it's people becoming more independent. I think that's really the way to make change and for is give power back to the people. Make people, uh, the internet is there to help you. There's every opportunity. And if you choose to put all your rocket fuel into bullshit on social media and just keep clicking and keep swiping and all this bullshit, then you're going to keep being a victim to the system, victim to the system bars. Um, but I think if you really do become independent, uh, on a personal level, then you start caring more. Like you can expand that out to like local politics and in your neighborhood. And then it grows from there. But I think that's the huge thing is, uh, becoming more independent and not playing this game of the lesser of two evils. It's a cop out. It really is. Um, there needs to be a way to get more choices and start voting for third-party candidates. Uh, I'm going to write in this year. You best believe Jocko Willink is getting my vote. You know, I, I think we need great leaders who can delegate to experts in those, in those fields. Uh, we've gotten like way too confused with what politics are and where responsibility lies. It's a conundrum, you know, conundrum. I wore this shirt for you guys, this nice flannel. Mm. Uh, I feel like this podcast has to go in a different direction. I think this is the issue with me, and this is like probably a side effect of being who I am, is that I start reflecting whatever's going on around. And it's like I just look at what's going on and that's what consumes me a bit. And I need to do better at not uh, falling into this shit because uh, I don't I don't like it. It feels toxic a lot of the times just being online and giving energy to all these different things. But it's like it's so in my face and in all of our faces all the time. Giggity just all over my face. And you have to deal with it when you're inside me, okay? When you're when you're spending seven minutes in Evan, you know, wherever you might be, when you're deep inside me in one of my podcasts, you know, you're there with me. Hashtag, I'm going to get canceled for that. Uh, by the way, uh, a little follow-up on it. I, I mentioned in my last episode that uh, my high school mascot um I need to get out in front of this, okay? Because I know in 10 years, I'm going to be canceled for this. My high school mascot, I mentioned, was a rebel. <sighs> there, I have to say it. I'm an ally, okay? I want you to know that I'm an ally. Listen, all you motherfuckers saying ally all the time, I'm an ally of this, I'm an ally of that. Listen, I'm an ally. You're not in war, okay? You're being a little dramatic. Uh, and people just lose me when they start saying, and I'm an ally. She 
shouldn't you just be an ally to life? Like where you're just like, no, I'm a good person. I'm just going to try to help good people. Because when you start breaking it up, I'm an ally to them. I'm an ally to them. Well, are you an ally to all of them? Because I'm sure there's some piece of shits in that demographic. You know, need some clarification. But anyway, I'm an ally to all you people who want to tear down every statue and want to change every connection to anything old. I really think this is Greta Thunberg behind this whole thing. And it's an attack on old people. All right. You all going after the old people, just trying to get rid of them. Greta Thunberg said she was not going to let them get away with this. She's winning. Greta is winning right now with her little smirk, probably selling across the Atlantic as we speak, just practicing her, how dare you. But my high school mascot was a rebel. Now, uh, I heard the backstory on it, and I found out that it was actually because they needed another high school in the Allen Valley, and uh, they were going to put it in Quartz Hill. Uh, and then I guess they zoned it to be in Palmdale. And they were like, we don't need another Palmdale school. We need in Quartz Hill. And this was one of the first protests that took place in the Antelope Valley. Shout out to them. And they protested that Quartz Hill needed a high school. They got the idea of calling them the Quartz Hill Rebels because they rebelled against the idea of a new school being zoned in Palmdale. Rebel bars. Um, and then they did adopt the rebel because that was the closest thing that they had to represent a rebel was a soldier. Now, I think at some time it had some connection to the Confederate soldier. I'll be honest with you. They got rid of that in the sixties. Okay. And they replaced it with a revolutionary soldier. Okay. And it, it became this big thing now where just because at one point, even though they had progress and everything, at one point, it had some kind of connection to it. Guess what? Everything has a connection to slavery in some point or some part because that's our country's history. You can't erase it and you have to acknowledge it. And that's why I'm like, we're going to start eating our tail. I said that in the last episode because where do we stop? Where does it end? Um, And I'm just going to have to say this. I have to acknowledge something. (sighs) When I was in high school, I would have to do these cheers. Okay. I was part of the swim team and we would go R-R-R-E-B, B-B-E-L-S, R-E-B-E-L-S, rebels, rebels, let's go rebels. (sighs) And I just want to apologize to everybody who's offended by that. Uh, I mean, no disrespect, and I'm an ally, all right? I just want you to know that. But I was forced. I didn't understand what I was saying at the time. I thought I was just representing my swim team, okay? Um, And I said that cheer across four years. So if you want to cancel me for being ignorant, I understand, kids. But I won't go down without a fight. God damn it, I'm a rebel. God damn it, canceled myself. You know what they want to change the the mascot to? The fucking ranchers. The Quartz Hill High ranchers. What? The actual fuck. Why? The ranchers? You are setting every kid up for failure, okay? They're going to get so much ranch TP'd on their house. Like, that's what I would do. If I found out a school got changed to the ranchers, oh, we're for sure going to throw buffalo wings at them when they go by little ranch there's going to be so much ranch jokes i would do it hell i want to do it that's not my high school anymore just like people say that's not my president that's not my high school anymore and i'm going to drown it in ranch okay ranch bombs hidden valley better get on that sponsorship though Hidden Valley better get on that sponsorship. But yeah, I guess, I guess they're trying to go with ranchers because it's like some 4-H community. That's what a lot of people don't know. When I first, the first day of school, I went to Quartz Hill High. I remember uh, walking to school and uh, you no know, walking into my first class and across the road, the street was literally a stampede on this farm. There was literally like cattle right across the street. And I'm like, wow, I go to school in the middle of a farm. 
Very cool. So the idea of the ranchers is like ranch workers and shit. I don't know. I feel like we could just do better. Why not the Quartz Hill rattlesnakes? Because there's actually rattlesnakes there. Dope, right? I'm actually pushing for that. Uh, I would like that. I would like that very much. The Quartz Hill rattlesnakes. Or even the Quartz Hill gophers. There's a lot of gophers in Quartz Hill. What else could we go with? Uh, there's ravens. Quartz Hill ravens. Why not uh, the Quartz Hill desert kangaroos? That would be sick. Listen, if anybody knows anybody on the Quartz Hill administration, the board, let me help you come up with the next mascot. There is so much missed opportunity. We can even go with the Quartz Hill High Poppies. Everybody knows we're famous for poppies, the poppy festival. How dope with that? You're coming out to your swim team or not coming out sexually. I mean, you could. I don't, I don't give shit. But you're just walking on deck and it's like, I love it when you call me Big Pop. B. Boom. Already. That's a freebie. Yeah, that would be dope. The Quartz Hill High Poppies. We already had the Tumbleweed School. We already had, I think there's a Quartz Hill High Road or Quartz Hill Road Runners. There's a Road Runner somewhere in Allen Valley. That school. The Rattlesnakes. That would be dope. Uh, the Quartz Hill High Ghetto Desert Cowboys. You know, a little bit of mix of everything. Yeah, that'd be dope. Uh, there was always rumors. It happened with every high school that there was somebody who fucked a sheep or a lamb. Actually, I learned this from a video I did. No, I didn't learn about fucking sheep. Listen, that you call a single sheep a sheep, but you also call a flock of sheep sheep. So it's like you just say the same thing, sheep. Um, but someone had sex with a sheep. And... Uh, it was like one of those high school uh, urban legends that went through the entire Antelope Valley. I don't know if other places, but since we were like a lot of farm area people, I think we just got that treatment in Antelope Valley. I'm sure other schools in different areas have their own urban legends. Like I bet in Ventura, they're like, dude, he fucked a mermaid, you know, or he fucked a dolphin. Probably fucked a dolphin because you would need uh, extra layers of fantasy and mysticism in that to accomplish fucking a mermaid. And I don't even know if that can be done. You know, I, I've seen mermaids in movies and I'm like, I don't even know where it would go. You know, I did see that movie, the lighthouse. I don't know if you've ever seen it. They showed a mermaid vagina. Okay. And that shit, I don't know how I felt about it. It looked something like seafood or something. It was just, it was very weird. <sighs> I don't know how we got there talking about what mascot we should do for Quartz Hill High. If someone actually reached out to Quartz Hill High and they were like, yeah, he's got some ideas, listen to the podcast. And then they got to that point of the podcast, they'd be like, all right, I think we're going to go in a different direction. We don't want any connection to him because he's canceled now. He's going to be canceled in five years and then he'll be canceled in 10 years from now. But I really would like to help rename uh, the Quartz Hill High uh, rebels. Sorry, I said it again. Trigger word. Rebels. Um, yeah, I think that would be dope. They have to do better than ranchers. That's so disrespectful. So disrespectful. Um, rattlesnakes. That's the best thing that comes to mind right now. Uh, when you're creating a brand, and this is me giving freebies for it when I help companies come up with logos and brand, uh, recognition and everything like that. What is going to be your logo? What is going to be the face of it? You got to think about merch. You got to think about uh, the display. Where is this going to be going? How much can you wring out of this? And I think with the rattlesnakes, there's a lot of different areas you can go with this. This is a free creative uh, workshop now. You take the rattlesnake. Okay, we got a lot of play on words that we can go with. With the rattle, we can go with the venom. We can go with the sharp teeth. We can go with striking fast. There are so many different avenues that you could use a rattlesnake for. Uh, digging holes, you're in the desert, uh, cold-blooded, um, poisonous. There's so much different stuff you could do with the rattlesnake. Rancher, oh cool. Uh, we're going to get made fun of for going on buffalo wings. Hidden Valley. And you can't even do the rebel cheer with it. R A N C H E R S. Ranchers, ranchers. We love ranch. 
No, it doesn't work. It's going to be terrible. I don't want to be a part of it. I would transfer. Yeah. But if you have any ideas on what a good mascot could be, you let me know. And I'm going to reach out to Quartzville High. I'm really going to get on. I'm really going to try to get that job uh, to helping them come up with a new logo and a new uh, mascot in general. That whole goddamn school needs a makeover. And I'm just the one to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of 7 Minutes in Heaven. I appreciate you guys being inside of me. And uh, I hope it was nice. I hope it was warm. And uh, remember, no matter what, I still love you. Even if you post bullshit stuff on social media. I still love you. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha.